today we're going to talk a little bit about how we can diversify our garden or farm using intercropping. And building diversity in our garden is the number one thing we can do to strengthen the ecological system. Um, so, for example, you know, a monocropped farm is one that is growing a single species. Uh, we see this in most industrial farming systems where they're growing one plant. For example, that could be, you know, a field of broccoli. And um, when they experience a pest outbreak, um, say for example, aphids are a common um, pest that attacks broccoli plants, uh, that aphid infestation can easily travel from one plant to the next and quickly take over um, that field of broccoli which in that situation, the farmer needs to come in with some kind of intervention and um, prevent the loss of their entire crop. Uh, generally in industrial agriculture, that's gonna look like some form of pesticide. Um, in a diversified system, what we see is that if we have broccoli growing next to carrots, growing next to lettuce, um, you know, aphids don't really go after carrots or lettuce. Um, so when an aphid outbreak kind of starts on a broccoli plant, it's not going to transfer over to our lettuce or our broccoli. And maybe we have a little bit of pest damage on our, on our broccoli plants, um, but we're not going to lose our whole crop. Uh, and, and then we, you know, because we have this diversified system, we also have uh, beneficial insects in, in this uh, ecological system that can come in and help mitigate that, um, that aphid problem. So the common one that we, we often hear about for aphids is ladybugs. So ladybugs, you know, if they have the habitat to live in our farm or garden, uh, they will come in and help take care of the aphid problem and prevent it from getting out of control. Um, and then in the end of the end kind of game, uh, the farmer and the farming community, the farmer's community should be factored into this ecological system. So, um, who the farmer is growing for. If the farmer at the end of the day has carrots, broccoli, um, lettuce, as well as many other crops to, to bring to the market, um, that supports that, that community because no one wants to eat only broccoli, right? We want a diversity in our diets and we need a diversity in our diets to keep us healthy. Um, so diversifying our system not only you know increases the yield for the farmer by um, allowing kind of tighter spacing and we can kind of get away with a little bit closer spacing um, it can also reduce you know weeds and um, pest problems as we kind of mentioned and then um, it can um, build an ecological system that supports not only the beneficial insects but also the um, the health of the soil. One of the most ingenious and beautiful intercropping systems is the Three Sisters. The Three Sisters were developed by the Native Americans in the Northeast and this system is has three plants growing together providing needs for each other just the way that sisters do so for each other throughout their lifetime. Um, so this system com is comprised of corn, beans, and squash. And um, what's happening here is we have um, our bean plants, which our beans are nitrogen fixers, right? So they are taking nitrogen from the air and fixing it into a plant available form through a symbiotic relationship with a bacteria that's on their root system and um, they're basically creating fertilizer, right? So they're taking that nitrogen and they're storing it into, into the soil. Um, and our corn, our corn is a really heavy nitrogen user. So corn needs lots of nitrogen to produce um, such a tall, big, large um, plant. And so basically our, our beans are providing the nutrients that are necessary to grow our corn. And then our beans actually need something to climb on. So if we were growing beans in um, by themselves, we would have to put up some kind of trellis for them to climb up and hold on to. 
but our corn can do that job for them. So the beans actually climb up the top of the corn and you can see that here. So you can see our corn climbing up the, or our beans climbing up the corn and um, providing that trellising system. And then down at the base, we have our squash. So our squash is a um, low growing plant that gets quite big and sprawling. And this plant has large leaves that cover the soil and prevent evaporation from happening, as well as suppressing weeds. And, um, you know, we can look in here, there's very little room or light to get into the base of the soil to have weeds growing. So we're very little, we haven't needed to weed this bed at all since it's gotten going. Um, and we're able to produce so much more food in this small space um, by growing these three plants together than if we were able to just grow one of these plants in this same space. And then our, our three sisters, these three plants, corn, beans, and squash, are actually a complete protein. So they have all nine amino acids that are needed for, um, for human consumption. So, so it actually eliminates the need for meat consumption if we can consume these three plants together. In this bed, what you'll see is we're intercropping tomatoes with lettuce. Um, and you can see our chickens also like our lettuce. Um, and basically what we're doing here is we're maximizing the amount of space that we have and growing as much as we can in a small space. So we planted our tomato transplants at the same time as the lettuce and the, the, um, the tomato plants are quite large. So they need two foot spacing between each plant. Um, but when they're young, there's, there's space between the plants. So we plant lettuce there, which is fast growing. And by the time the tomato plants need the space, um, we will have harvested the lettuce and then the tomatoes can take over the whole bed and provide um, and utilize that space.